All right, population ecology. And remember that a population is a group of the same species. In fact, let's go ahead and review those words. So jot this down before we move any further. Um, and we've already went over this, but just in case. Okay, so you know what one species is. Okay, well, a group of the same species is a population. Okay, and then, so species is one. Population, which is today's lecture, is a group of the same species. Okay, all living things, so all the different populations is going to be community. Right, and then if you have the living plus the non-living, that's going to be the ecosystem. So this next set of notes is on the same species. Okay, so uh, this field of study deals with the same species, like it says. Uh, a population, they have to live in the same place at the same time, uh, and they show signs of reproduction. So they can reproduce together. You know, they, um, their DNA is similar enough that they could reproduce. Uh, the human population will soon be over 8 billion people on earth. And so we, and you can look right there, we've grown a lot, right? We've grown a lot. It's like exponentially growing. Uh, it mainly focuses on the amount of people in a certain place. I took a class in college um, called biology conservation, biology conservation, and it seemed like the teacher talked about China all the time and how China was overpopulated and it was polluted because of all the people, and if you think about it, all the people make trash, and all the, you know, in, in a place where there's so many people, there's nowhere to put the trash, like waste mines and stuff like that, and so I think of, anytime I ever think of density, I think of China and that teacher. Um, Okay, so man-made boundaries or natural boundaries exist, like the continents and the rivers and mountains and stuff like that. And then dispersion is where within the boundaries the organisms are located. And so um, kind of take yourself and step back and think, okay, Birmingham is really populated, right? There's a lot of people and buildings and places um, in Birmingham. And then in Trustful, we are also very populated, but not as much as downtown Birmingham. So there's more trees and stuff like that. But then if you go on out, Springville doesn't have near as many people as Trustville does. And so Springville is more spread out, more land areas. And so that's what I mean by dispersion. Where are the groups of people? Okay, so types of dispersion. There's And actually, I want you to draw these. So clumped is where... Um, organisms live clumped, like in uh, schools of fish or packs of wolves or um, things like this. They usually result from a need for nutrients, mating, and, and they protect each other. You know, wolves travel in packs because they can protect each other and they can hunt together. Uh, you know, and, they, and wolves find it more beneficial to hunt together. And so take a second and draw clumped for me. Like, just put the little dots out. Okay, uniform. This usually represents territorial or favorable environments. Uh, and it shows you penguins. But really, if you think about it, trees, because they have such big roots, they have to be spread out. You know, big trees can't grow right beside each other. And so that, or some... Uh, little flowers they actually release a toxin to prevent predators and they so nothing will grow right around them so uniform are organisms that grow in a uniform manner i always think about corn is planted in rows that's not natural but it you know makes me think and then random there's no apparent reason they're just you know everywhere and so these trees shown here are that way Okay, and then a live table. Just take a second, stop looking at your notes and look at the PowerPoint for me. Um, this is showing you age. For, so from zero to one, I think this is, a yeah, squirrels. It's from zero to one, the number alive at the start of the year is 337. Okay, well look on down, uh, I guess after year one, squirrels really start to die. Because from one to two, there's only 252. 
But then, I mean, there's only one squirrel that's, you know, 9 to 10 in a particular area. Okay, and so, so you can actually see, um, okay, so at the first of the year, there's the 1% alive or 100% alive. And then after that, there's only 0.386. So it drastically goes down, more than half. Uh, the number of deaths is shown. And so we could do this like, um, I used to have an activity where you took a newspaper and you did obituaries and births, but everyone doesn't post their births in the newspaper um, and everyone doesn't post their obituary. So it, wouldn't, it wasn't a very good activity, but you can kind of see, get an idea of it. Um, so growth, this occurs by immigration with an I, decline, E migration, so moving out, I moving in, E moving out. You can remember that because exit. And then there was a life table that showed specific age traits. Okay, with your survivorship curves, I want you to draw this for a second. So pause the video and draw it. Okay, type one is going to be uh, they have lots of, they have many young numerous in the middle, and then they die as they get older. So people are a good example of type 1. So do me a favor and write in people, right? And so, you know, some people do die at young ages, but most people live to an older age. And then type 2 um, has a constant decline. Birth rate equals death rate. And so write that in. Birth rate equals death. And your example here is squirrels. So there's just as, you know, there's a lot of squirrels that are little and they die consistently after they're young. And then type three is going to be where there's lots of baby organisms and most of them die. And only a few live to be really old. So this would be like Nemo. Um, you know, there was a lot of brothers and sisters and he was the only one that lived. So type three have many young and um, they live in a harsh environment. And so I do want you to draw this curve and make sure you've written an example for all three. Um, all right, I hope this was helpful.